Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the latest poll from YouGov because it's really very remarkable for a number of reasons. First of all, it's the joint lowest poll rating for the Conservatives. Second, it's amongst the biggest poll gaps that's existed since Rishi Sunak became Conservative Party leader. Third, because despite over three months now of full throttle campaigning from the Conservatives, the polling is just getting worse and worse for them. Fourth, because I think actually this is the biggest gap in who would make the best Prime Minister between Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak, you know, since Rishi Sunak took over. And finally, because Reform UK are now eating into their lead really very, very badly. Disastrously so, in fact. So on the face of it, you know, you can look at this polling trend and you can think, well, things were still worse for the Tories under Liz Truss. And yes, technically that is true. Except, of course, the worst point of Liz Truss's mercifully brief period in charge was a fairly rapid spike, which recovered very quickly, or partially recovered very quickly, once she'd been deposed. But what we've seen under Rishi Sunak is polling stagnation to go with the economic stagnation the Tories have been bringing for over a decade. The long-term trend is one of actually slightly worsening for the Tories. But at the very least, it is not one of recovery at all. Every time there's a bit of narrowing the polls, and the Tories go, oh, this is exciting, this is exciting. Within a few weeks, it's back to where it was, sometimes worse off. And before I go over some of the remarkable results from the data tables, consider the context right now. Think about what's happening. We're three weeks away from the local and mayoral elections, the last big elections before the general election. Come, no matter when the general election is. These are really important for public perceptions. Actually, they're also of practical importance to the Conservatives as well, because for every councillor, council, or worse still, mayor that Sunak loses, he creates a pocket of local party activists who become demoralised because of those losses and are less likely to go out campaigning in the general election. And imagine if he is mad enough to call the general election for January. Oh, does he think they're going to go out campaigning over Christmas? Have a good one. I remain of the view that Sunak is absolutely insane not to have called the general election by now. And what of the political news? Oh, social media, it's wall-to-wall -wall attacks on Angela Rayner, just as it was with Keir Starmer two years ago. Journalists are declaring, oh, this remains a problem for Labour. A problem for Labour? I've prayed for the days when Labour have problems like a 26-point poll lead over the Tories just before an election. Now, obviously, national voting intention polls aren't a good fit for local and mayoral elections because they don't cover all the same regions and where attitudes to voting behaviour can be different as well. But if the Tory campaigns were working, you'd think they'd be seeing some benefit in the national polling as well. Last year, towards the end of March, Labour also had a 26-point poll lead over the Conservatives as the local election campaign began. But over the following few weeks, as we led up to that local election campaign, the polls narrowed, and they narrowed a lot. At the end of April, the gap was only 14 points, although it opened up again by the summer. But the point is that the Conservatives managed to narrow the polls, or maybe voters were rethinking things with talk of elections, and yet the Tories still did worse than expected in those elections. But it'll be interesting to see what happens this year. But I will say this, with just under three weeks to go, there is no narrowing of the polls evident like there was last year. At the equivalent point last year, at this same point, three weeks before the elections, the gap had already closed to 15 points. So it didn't actually narrow very much more in those last three weeks, but it had narrowed to 15 points in the first few. That hasn't happened. The gap has actually just bounced up. And the locals should be higher profile this year, nationally. They should actually have a bigger impact on, on national voting intention because of the mayoral contest, especially with all the campaigning for the London mayoral contest, which is bleeding out into the national news as well. And this is just the surface view. Under the bonnet, it's extraordinary. In terms of 2019 Conservative voters, only 46% say they intend to vote Conservative, though that is excluding don't knows. But 31% say they will vote Reform UK. Double the number who say they will vote Labour. 
This is now a huge problem for the Conservatives, let me explain. So the Conservatives are losing way more votes to Reform UK than Labour now, way more. So of course that means Reform UK are the greater threat to their vote share by far. However, this creates two massive problems for them. The first is that a strategy designed to attract these voters back to the Tory fold inevitably means moving even further from the centre because these voters are very authoritarian in their views, right? So you're moving much further from the centre. You're talking about policies that are much less palatable to people around there, making it easier for the parties who are really challenging them for seats to pick up this rich seam of centrist swing voters. Because Reform UK are not actually challenging the Tories for seats, just votes. All gets very messy. And the second problem is that these voters are very unlikely to be attracted back to the Conservatives anyway. Doesn't matter how appealing their ideas sound to them. Reform UK will come up with something that sounds even better. And the Tories are the incumbents with a track record of failure. All Reform UK need to do is say the Tories have had years to deliver what they're promising but things only get worse, which is true. There was a time when Reform UK were just nibbling at the Tory vote. The Conservatives should have left it, focused on the much greater number of votes, abandoning them for their real competitors. But they didn't. They chased after those Reform UK voters. And the more they've chased after them, the more votes Reform UK have taken. 31%. It's massive for a small party of dubious funding, which is not projected to win any seats at all in the election. Almost a third of the voters who propelled the Tories to their largest majority for 30 years are going to vote for extremist no-hopers now. How bad does your strategy have to be for that to happen? But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.